Don, you are a physicist, you believe in God, and you are certainly rational because you look at the problems that your theism has when you look at the world scientifically or philosophically. What are some of the problems that you face? Well, I've often said that the biggest problem that I face is, is just the, the, the problem of evil. And so, but I maybe won't give a big explanation of that, but I, but I maybe will say briefly that I do believe that God has created the best the best possible world, but that there's a trade-off between different things. And, I, and in my case, I see huge value in the mathematical elegance of the universe, but that has a trade-off that these very elegant laws that God has chosen to use often lead to suffering within the universe. So okay. that's, that's one of that, but, but maybe okay. I'll leave that to a different discussion okay. about that particular issue. Okay, what else? So, um, I mean, another thing that did face me several years ago is what I call the afterlife awareness problem. This is arising from what's called the doomsday argument that Brandon Carter originally <laughs> discussed and John Leslie expanded upon. And this was, this was the issue that if you had different hypotheses for how long human life might last, one in which there's rough, you know, not that many more people to live after us that have lived before, that's hypothesis A, Frax, and hypothesis B, that, there were, that life would go on for a very long time, there'd be far more humans in, the, in hypothesis B. Well, in hypothesis B, we would be unusually early. So the probability of us seeing ourselves so early would be low. So this counts as evidence against hypothesis B. Which might mean that the human race is going to be extinct for one reason or another within a reasonably short period of time. Yes, it might. It, it, it could well be that, that case. Now, that particular issue never really, yeah, bo yeah. <laughs> really bothered me too much because as a Christian, I believe that Jesus was going to come back to Earth anyway. And so I was not... You know, necessarily having huge confidence before it that, that, our, that our Earth would last a lot longer. But then I did realize another version of this that I think I was original to, to think of is that if I also included uh, not just people here on Earth, but if I included all conscious awarenesses, both in this world and in an afterlife, which I believe in, I believe that Jesus Christ came to Earth to live and die for our sins and was resurrected on the cross, or was crucified and was resurrected as evidence of his promise to resurrect us into a new life, then I realized that the, the traditional view that, or, or at least a common view, I don't know if it's traditional, but a common view that the afterlife consists of an infinite sequence of, of observations. If each one of those had equal probability or equal measure in some sense, that all the measure would be concentrated on the afterlife and there would be no probability left for us to be here. <laughs> so therefore, our observation that we are here rather than in the afterlife was counted as evidence against this particular version of the afterlife theory. Yeah. <laughs> so that did bother me, and it did bother me emotionally for a time, and it still has a little, you know, a little bit of puzzlement, I mean, to it. But I did eventually think that there's a possible solution to this, which is related to some similar problem, so-called measure problem in cosmology, that different experiences don't have to have the same measure. They, there can be different amounts of measure for them. And so it occurred to me it's conceivable that even if there are an infinite number of measure of conscious experiences or in the afterlife, that the, the, if you ordered them from the most measure to the least, it might be a decreasing sequence, such as one, a half, a fourth, and eighth, and so on. And if you add all those up, you get the finite number two. So it might be that the total measure or, or, or the total probability, if you chose a perception at random, to be in the afterlife is not infinitely bigger than the present. But that means that you are devaluing experiences in the afterlife compared to this life, which contradicts your theology. Well, I'm, de I'm devaluating it in comparison to the infinite value that it might have traditionally had. I, I'm not devaluing it with respect to the present because I'm, I'm not saying that it has to be less. I'm not even saying that the measure has to be less than the present. It's just that it, 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 it can't be hugely more. But of course, besides the measure, there's also the intrinsic value of each right. experience. And right. that could be great. I mean, it could be that God has great ecstasy in store for us. And so, you know... It, so you have two problems in the afterlife. One is the, the number of perceptions, which right, right. if life is infinite, it seems that however long those... How long, however long each one lasts, this is also infinite because infinite. Uh, right, right. Yeah, and and the and the second is is the value of each perception, and if that's much better than it is today, then you have a double problem, and so you can't solve it by by making afterlife perceptions smaller than the ones we have here. 
Well, I don't think I don't see that the value by itself is a problem. I mean, if if the let's suppose for the sake of argument that you said the measure was the same for the afterlife or for here, right? Then that would say that there would be a fifty percent chance if you chose a if if you imagine choosing a perception at random out of the total all all perceptions from the our life and the afterlife, you get a fifty percent chance it's here. No, so it's, no, no, but 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 you have an infinite afterlife, and we have a finite here. You know, well, you, you you've lived for what thirty five years or something? Uh, a bit more, yeah, <laughs> okay, sixty five well, years, okay, well, well, something like that. Nine days ago, you know, so we're about the same category. We've lived that time, and so if infinity compared to sixty five. I mean, what are you talking about? Well, I, I agree that the total number of years would be greater, but I'm saying there is a concept of the measure of each experience, and I, I don't really have time to explain that here, although I, I could give an analog. I could imagine that, that you imagine each experience is being created by God for a certain amount of his time. And you could imagine that... Now, this is just an analog. I'm not saying this is the way it is or even the way I believe it is. I'm just saying that if you suppose that, that God gave a certain experience in the afterlife say one second of his time, and the next one a half second, and the next one a fourth, and so on, the total, time, the total God time for it would then be two seconds for, for that, and then maybe the pre-life count for another two seconds or something. So it's, it's, it's the probabilistic reasoning that man be into trouble with the afterlife. I, I was getting that the likelihood of a theory of, of an afterlife was tending towards zero because I was putting all the probability on, on experience being afterlife, which gave zero probability for the present life. Right. So I'm saying this model... So you know that's wrong. So yeah, so I'm, I'm the, the well, we're not absolutely sure because there's also the prior probability. So if you're absolutely sure afterlife existed, then 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 it would still be consistent. I mean, there, it's, there's nothing impossible about it. It's just that if you said that you had a prior probability uh, of greater than zero, that there isn't an afterlife, then if you went through this argument, then afterwards you'd have a posterior probability that would be well, very high that there is no afterlife. So it depends on your priors. Yeah. And, and you, you could say, well, we're just certain because of what Jesus said and saw that there is an afterlife. Although I don't think Jesus said that much about, I don't think he said anything about the measure of it. But so the, it's the measure that has to do with the, with the problem in probability. The value of each one, I think, is a separate issue. So I, I, you know, I think that we could, if there's half that have you know, not, mostly nice, I mean, some bad experiences, but, and then there's the other half that's extremely valuable, it's, that's enormous about belief. That doesn't give any probabilistic problem th that I could see. I mean, it might, you know, you might puzzle, well, why, we're, why are we in the worst half of the two? But if you say it's a 50% chance that we're in this half versus the other half, I don't think there's anything probabilistically or statistically wrong with that.